studio right now. Just want to give a shout out to all my people. Dang tell on the beat. Watch out for the album coming up. It's like this, y'all. It's like I need to properly introduce who I am. Some of y'all know, some don't, man. Like I'm good on camera because I realized when I was like 19 that like if I, one day I was gonna die, and if I died, I wanted people to see what I did every day. So I bought a camera, right? And then in 2006, my cousin got murdered. My cousin Vic, who got murdered. My cousin Vic. The person who put me in music, the reason why I started doing music, the person who bought me my first piece of music equipment and, and, and bought and helped me buy that MPC 2000 right there. My cousin Vic, the person who I grew up with, like we was like best friends. I was like my brother, but he got murdered. He got, he got shot. And when he got shot, we, we had like 70 songs that we did. And we was recording songs every day that we worked together. Y'all working on? We working on that, just that, that mind right. That mind it's right. Your mind you right. It's so it's this ridiculous. Don't make mistakes, it's gonna be ridiculous. ridiculous. Y'all gonna get to feature it, feel it, hear it, you know, get your mind right off of it. It's gonna be, it's gonna be so much, so high, so soon. You know? And that's the tip. He didn't finish none of the songs. So we got 70 incomplete songs. And when he passed away, everybody stopped talking about him after two weeks. Like my cousin Vic was like the biggest voice in our family. Like even the older, my uncles, my aunts, like he was the biggest voice in our family. Like he brought people together. Like, like I said, he was working two jobs to like save up money to buy me music equipment. And then he get killed. And then after two weeks, everybody stopped talking about him. All of our cousins, it was like 11 or 12 of us. We was in the studio every day making music. Everybody's coming to the house, doing freestyle sessions for hours. All that shit stopped. And I remember at his funeral, everybody was in the parking lot at the funeral, and we was all talking about how we was going to carry on his legacy, and everybody was going to keep it up. And I was telling them, like, yo, I got the, I got the hard drives. Y'all, let, let's finish the songs. Oh, yeah, we going to throw verses on them. Ain't none of them fools pulled up. Ain't none of them fools pulled up. I'm going to start calling their ass out, too but ain't none of them pull up and still to this day nobody talks about Vic right this dude was the most passionate person I ever met in music he loved music more than I love music like he did music and I'm the only person in the family that has video of him nobody in the family has any video everybody got pictures but nobody has him actually moving and talking on video just me right that scared me because all that time he's spending music he didn't have nothing to show for it when he passed away. That was 2006. That was 2006. What are y'all in here doing? Doing what? You need to go sit down. I think it's bad time. Go sit on, go sit on the couch. If you don't know how to play right, you need to don't play at all. See, I, look, you want to sit in the same seat as him. Sit on the couch. <laughs> so, I had sold a beat. I had sold a beat, and I was in the process of doing the 2006 Winter Olympics. So I produced the main song. I produced the things. There's a lot of shit y'all know about me. I produced the theme song for the 2000 Winter Olympics in Torino. Come on now. The theme song for the, uh, the Olympics NBC, I produced it, y'all. Hello, me. Yes, Dame Taylor. I produced it. 
So when the Olympics, the Winter Olympics came on and or went to commercial, they played my song. During highlights, they played my song. Y'all do y'all research on it, whatever. When I got a check from NBC, right? I took that and I bought a thousand dollar video camera that recorded on DVD. And then I bought an NPC 4000. I bought a whole bunch of music equipment. Y'all gonna see all this stuff in videos. And I recorded everything I did from that point. Making some tracks. Yeah. What are you using there, man? You see what I got? Is that the 4000? APC 4000. Alright, man. One of our producers out there step that game up. Step their game up, that's step. right. <laughs> You're the man. We got the 4000. What's that? We got the MS 2000 Cord. Cord? Analog synthesizer. What's that? We got the Roland XP 30. XP. Trident Extreme. Okay. You see it's a little messy in here right now. You yeah, know what I'm saying? Man. doing some remodeling. Yeah, it's mid-December right now. We're going to get everything put together by the 1st of January. Banging out tracks. Mm -hmm. Dang Taylor DL on the beats. You know how we do it all day. Yeah, dude. It's a good lookout, man. We taking over the world, man. From this little room right here. You see this little room right here? It's what we taking over. This, we taking over the world from in this room right here. Hey, dude, I got a question, man. What's up, man? Like, you know how you got all your keyboards and all that stuff just out in the camera, you know? Yeah, yeah. Like, there's a lot of guys, like, they don't let people know what they use in the studio. Man. It's whatever, man. You know, a lot of people are insecure because they really ain't using nothing. They got other people using their stuff, man. This is our shit, man. You know what I'm saying? So, y'all can watch this and go, go to the guitar center and tell your mom that you want what you saw in this room for Christmas. Cause that's what y'all gonna do anyway. You know what I'm saying? So you know it's whatever, man. You know. Why is it like that, man? Why do people feel like they have to go get what the next biggest producer has just to make a beat? Like, I don't know, man. You know, I mean, follow the leader. I'm gonna be real with you, man. A lot of these, a lot of these dudes. No disrespect to the people that got talent, man, but a lot of these cats is just, you know, they just rolling with the trend. You know what I'm saying? Just like when high school, man. You see the dude with the J's. You like, oh, I got a cop from J's. So it's the same thing with, you know, music. For some reason, it's like a trend. It's not even an art no more, man, you know? People see it and they hop on it. Oh, I want to do that. I want to do that. I want to do that. I want to be a part of that. Not because they was born into a music family, but just because, you know, the next person doing it, which is not that good. You know what I'm saying? I don't respect that at all. Man. So, you know, to each his own, though, man. If you make it, you make it. If you fake it, then you don't get no respect. You know, so it's whatever, man. So I got my, pretty much my whole life has been on camera from like 2007 to like now. You know what I'm saying? So I've been talking to a camera for a very long time. I didn't cry in front of cameras. I didn't did everything in front of cameras. I didn't even did stuff. You ain't supposed to even be showing nobody in front of no cameras. I didn't did all that. You feel what I'm saying? So like, I just know that like, if I pass away, I would hope that somebody would be able to show how much I love this shit. So all of the, t all my stories and stuff can come out. So my goal, my, my, my intentions on YouTube is to tell my story. That's what my intent is. That's why I'm on YouTube. I'm on YouTube so that I could tell my story. But I realize that like y'all don't be watching my vlogs. Y'all don't watch my vlogs. Like now that I'm like answering people's questions and people calling me Kevin Samuels, them videos is getting hella views. But when I was buying shoes for students and educating students who flew out from different, y'all don't watch that shit. I got a, hundreds of videos on my channel. Hundreds of videos on my channel. My oldest video from like 2009, 2010. So that's why I'm on here. Just in case y'all wondered, I'm on YouTube to eventually tell my story. I want y'all to see what I do as an entrepreneur today. I want y'all to do, see how hard it is to run a fucking business. I started a music school from scratch. I want y'all to see the inner workings of that so, shit. So, number six, what I'm thinking how we can get around this is part of the training for the intern is to go over this to let them know i think we should put this put together some type of agreement basically saying that like yo we we are very familiar with the fair labor standards act 
and the seven rules that go into the intern and, and we just want to make sure we go over these things with you the extent to which the internship provides training that would be similar to that which would give an educational environment including the clinical and other hands-on training provided by educational institutions so i feel like that is our responsibility to put together that system if we have an internship training program part of the program is is we need to have a program where we basically are confident that the students are going to you know have training that would be similar to that which we will be given in the educational environment so that's our responsibility i'm Not arguing with students i'm getting disrespected by students i'm having students try to steal my ideas i'm over here turning students into employees i'll come to the office because he moving in his apartment today and he won't go on a date with his girl tomorrow so what about this big opportunity over us right now and i don't got my guys you know what I'm saying? What I'm supposed to do? What I'm supposed to do? Oh, bro, take your time. Enjoy your time with your girl. Bro. Like, or I can just go get these, these students that live with their parents that ain't got no jobs. They ain't got no bills. They ain't got no relationships. They ready to work right now because they know this opportunity is what's going to put them in those Fortune 500 companies because this is going to be on their resume. What I'm supposed to do? What I'm supposed to do? You know what I'm saying? So... Whenever I tell someone to take a week off, I just, I, I need everybody to know. A week off is like, I can't think about you right now. I'm going to do this shit without you. Like, because I got to figure this shit out regardless to whether dudes want to go on dates or dudes got to move for the day or dudes got to quarantine for COVID. I, what I'm supposed to do? You know what I'm saying? And I don't think nobody realized like how monumental this could possibly be, bro. I'm making beats in studios. I got studio sessions. I got video with Nipsey Hustle, all this shit. I don't put it up because y'all don't watch this shit. Come on now. So that's why I'm on here. So now I'm realizing that there's a need. Like I'm starting to realize that the there is a need for like to help people online like i'm starting to realize that like there's an online music community that needs help and so i didn't learn about the online music community until i started monster sessions and when i started having students that would come to different classes they were telling me all of the different things they were using and all the people they were watching so that's how i learned about busy works beats because two of my students were like yeah i watched this guy named busy works beats so i'm like who is that i look him up i'm like this the guy you was watching so I learned about the online music community from my students. My students have taught me about all of, I learned about Kenny Beats from Franco. I learned about Curtis King from my homeboy name. His name is Mike. He's an engineer. I learned about Recording Revolution from my homie Mike. I learned about Busy Works Beats from Artie. I learned about, um, uh, what's the dude that, uh, Smino producer, uh, he like really dope. Um. I learned about him from y'all. I learned about Av McCree from y'all. I learned about um, Kaylin, Kaylin Ellis from y'all. I learned about Stolen Drums from, uh, from one of my students. His name is Randy. So I know about the online music community from y'all. I don't know none of these dudes, man. You feel what I'm saying? I came from the real industry in LA. I didn't work at the biggest recording studios in LA. I didn't work at Chalice. I didn't work at Larrabee. Dane Taylor in the studio, getting down, just checking in. We gonna holler back. Peace. I didn't work at Record Plant. I used to work for Dave Pensado. I used to work for Jason Joshua. I used to work for Manny Mariquin. I used to sweep floors. I used to mop floors. I used to go get food for Chris Brown. Ariana Grande, Sean Kingston. I drove T.I.'s car, dropped him off at Ch Ros Roscoe's Chicken and Waffles. Like, I have real in industry experience. That's what I do. And then I decided to get on YouTube. Joe, what's good? You know, working hard. Let Dang Taylor do a beat. Yeah, Live, man. ESPN in y'all face. Uh, and that the that zone, man. Prosper. 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 You know what I mean? I got like a million names, but you know, <laughs> Peter Rose Prosper today. Okay. Every day. You know what I'm saying?
Make a run. So I'm not a YouTube person. I'm an industry person who giving y'all content. And I want to really help y'all individually, but y'all got to help y'all selves first. Like if you just tuned in for entertainment, then stay quiet. That's cool. Do your thing. If you here for entertainment, that's okay. Cause I'm going to entertain you. I'm going to give you some entertainment. I'm going to give you some entertainment. That's what I'm going to do. You know what I'm saying? Stay tail on the beat. Stay on the beat. Yeah. Dane Taylor on the beat. 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 That's my name, man, Dane Taylor, right there. If you don't know who he is, then you don't do music that well. Sorry. I'm sorry. If you ain't got Dane Taylor, it's an interesting situation on your album. Because this album is hot. This beat is killing. Oh, my man said he can be playing magic for 100 on whoever. Hey, let me get back to Dane Taylor. Step up and fuck this business. I fucked with Dane Taylor. I hope you do too. I'm going to entertain y'all. You feel me? But if you here to learn, if you here to learn about mixing, producing, the industry, I need to know that. What are you talking about? They ain't no way T.I. is fired. F2, exactly. <laughs> Nobody plans a trip for two weeks. That's a motherfucker like they first meet. That's a Dave Posado was that dude. If y'all don't know, do a little research. Yep. I used to, look, I got fired from Larry B because of fucking Dave Pensado. Dave Pensado sent me on a run. So I... I, I be assuming y'all be knowing. Okay, so I was a studio runner. I was an assistant at Chalice, Chalice Recording Studio. So y'all can, I'm gonna type these recording studios in so y'all can look them up. Um, so Chalice Recording Studio was my first job. So that was my first recording studio internship. So I was an intern and then I got promoted to runner. When I was at Chalice, on the first day, I met Britney Spears on the first day. This was when she was recording uh, Blackout. And I think it's called Blackout with Gimme More. And Danger Hands produced pretty much the majority of that album. And they had Studio G for an entire month. So Danger Hands produced the whole album at Chalice. And I was the assistant during that time. So while I was at Chalice, I met, I met, um, Britney Spears, Timberland, Danger Hands, uh, Marcella Arica, which was, uh, like Danger Hands' best friend. It's like his engineer. She like a really dope mixing engineer. Um, I saw Kanye there before, but I didn't get a chance to actually meet him. Um, I got to sit in on Chris Brown, T-Pain and Usher recording Kiss Kiss. And so I was kind of like a um, honorary assistant for that session. So Kiss Kiss was recorded Chalice. Um, I was there during that whole entire session. Um, T-Pain had the, the studio. That's when T-Pain was hot. So I got to see a lot of T-Pain. I got to like kick it with T-Pain a lot. Usher brought me in the studio. I told that story on the video. Ariana Grande when she was little, like J.R. Rodham was the, was the uh, house producer there. And he used to bring like uh, Rihanna, Ariana Grande, um, Sean Kingston, that's when they was all hot. Trent Reznor from Nine Inch Nails used to use the back studio, I forgot. Um, Saul Williams, um, Eve. So those are all the people I met when I was at Chalice. So now I left Chalice and then I went to Record Plant. When they had Record Plant, oh my God, man, I met Chris Brown there again, right? Because Record Plant is right around the corner from Chalice, okay? So then. I wasn't at Record Plant for a long time because Record Plant was like a, a weird studio to work at. So then I got a chance to go and work at Larrabee and Larrabee was the best. 
because Larry B was the only recording studio that had in-house engineers. At the time, all the recording studios in LA don't have resident engineers because a lot of the big time artists who use the studios have their own engineers that they travel with. So it didn't make sense for recording studios to just have engineers just there because most of the people weren't using them. So Larrabee at the time was the only recording studio that had in-house engineers. So Larrabee was three studios. You had studio one, which was Jason Joshua. Look them up. Jason Joshua, which is one of the biggest mix engineers. The three people I'm about to name are the three biggest mix engineers in the industry. And I work for him. Okay. So in one studio, you had Jason Joshua. Y'all can look all this stuff up. So studio one was Jason Joshua. Studio two was Manny Mariquin. And then studio three was the legend himself, Mr. Dave Pensado. Okay. So. So now here I am working as a runner at Larrabee. Okay. You got three studios with the biggest recording engineer. So at the time, at the time, Jason was mixing. Jason was just started. So he was, he was doing all the hip hop stuff. Cause Dave was the, the resident guy. And then he brought Jason Joshua up from being a, an assistant and he gave him his own room. So he, D Dave Pensado was giving Jason Joshua all of the hip hop stuff because Dave was mixing everything. So he gave all the hip hop stuff to Jason and then Dave started doing all the pop stuff. So Jason, so at, at the time Jason was working with the dream, tricky Stewart, Timberland, um, just a whole bunch of rap shit. Diddy, he was doing all eight albums, Keisha Cole, uh, Mary J Blige. So all these people was in studio one. I'm working for all these people, whatever they need. I got to go get them, whatever they need, food, blunts, alcohol, whatever. I got it. I'm the guy who is on call to go do what they need. And then when they eat, I got to wash their dishes. And then I got to keep the refrigerator stock. I got to sweep mop the floor. If they dogs need to go for a while, I got to do all that. You know what I'm saying? So you got all of the, the, um, rap, rap and R and B people in studio one with Jason Joshua. And then in studio two was Manny Mariquin who was doing Kanye and Alicia keys. Really? That's really all he was doing. John legend. Um, so stronger y'all heard the story about stronger when stronger got sent to like 11 different mix engineers. Manny was the last one to mix it. The final mix was Manny Mariquin. He mixed it while I worked there. 808s and heartbreaks was being mixed every day while I worked at Larrabee. So I got to hear 808s of heartbreaks before y'all heard the shit. If y'all look in the credits, my homeboys are the assistants on the credits. Chris, Chris Plata, y'all go look his name up. Y'all gonna see him, All right? Jared, I forgot my man Jared's last name, but they were the assistant engineers. We all work together, okay? So then in Studio 3 in the back, you had Dave Pensado, who was just doing really stuff for Interscope. So he was doing like Christina Aguilera. He was doing um, the Pussycat Dolls. And he was doing, uh, what's that one girl that had just blew up off American Idol? Um, the white girl who blew up off American Idol. But he was really working with the pop stuff. He wasn't uh, the pop and alternative stuff. He wasn't doing no hip hop stuff in his room. So I got videos of me sneaking in the rooms. I got like, I'm, I'm gonna put all this stuff up cause I got video of me in all their rooms. I got proof. I'm gonna show y'all all this shit. Y'all, y'all talking to a real one out here, right? So mind you, mind you, hold on. While I'm sweeping floors, while I'm sweeping floors and mopping floors, <clears throat> I had a song with Lil Wayne on a mixtape. I hate talking about it. I never talk about it. I never talk about it. I don't like talking about it, but I'm realizing I got to talk about it. But on one of Lil Wayne's biggest mixtapes, I got a beat. Okay. So while I'm, while I'm working at Larrabee, I'm sweeping them up in floors. I got, I, I didn't produce a song for the Olympics, right? I'm, I'm, currently in the process of talking to Viacom about doing a licensing deal with Viacom. I'm a Lil Wayne mixtape and I'm currently talking to Shady Aftermath about 
three singles that I'm supposed to produce for 50 Cent. But I'm I'm sweeping and mopping floors and going to go get food for the people at Larrabee as a fucking runner. All right. So if y'all know L.A., it's a Cuban place called Porto's. Porto's is, is one of the most busiest restaurants in L.A. Y'all can look at us called Porto's. At the time, it was only one Porto's location in L.A. Now they all over L.A., but it was only one. It was only one fucking Porto's. Dave Pensado got me fucking fired from Larrabee. And I'm going to tell y'all why. So, Dave Pensado, every day we had to make his dinner. Like, we had to make his food, right? So, Dave, all the studios at Larrabee got a lounge. And the lounge is like, they hard, like TV, all that. So, Dave would eat in his lounge. He would stop mixing. Then at like 4 o'clock every day, we had to set up a TV tray with a Diet Coke. And then whatever, he, whatever food he ordered, we had to put it on real plates with real silverware. Because Dave didn't like having, like, you know, like plastic. He didn't like eating out of containers and stuff. So we had to order whatever we got for him, sandwiches and all of that. And we had to put it on real plates with real silverware. And you had to put the plate in a fork over here, Diet Coke with a glass of ice, boom. And then you got to be out before Dave comes out to eat. And then you got to make sure that everything he want is on that fucking tray. Because he don't, like, if he needs something, you should already have it there. So he can't, like, go and be like, yo, call you back in. You got to bring something out. So you got to make sure you have everything he need and have it there so he can eat and then go back to mix. You know what I'm saying? That shit was dope. Like it was, this was an amazing experience for me. Like an amazing experience because while you serving the biggest recording engineers in the industry or the, the biggest mixing engineers in the industry, you also serving their clients. So while I'm sitting in the studio, Mary J. Blige is walking through the fucking hallways, Ludacris walking through the hallways. Like this is, and then you have to make them feel comfortable and all this stuff too. You know what I'm saying? So Portos, you go to Portos. You were there for an hour, tops. You were there for a whole fucking hour. Larrabee is in North Hollywood. Portos is in Glendale. Dave, anytime somebody sent you on a Portos run, you hated it because you knew you was going to be late. And if you late with somebody fool, you're going to get fired. So they picked me for the Portos run. Dave wants some fucking chocolate chip cookies. So I'm like, shit. All right. I right, go all the way to Portos, all the way to Glendale to get Dave some fucking chocolate chip cookies. All right, cool. Bet. So I pull up the Portos, the line outside the door. The door, the line all the way around the corner. It's a whole line. I'm there 35 minutes. They call on my phone. Where you at? Where'd you mean where I'm at? I'm standing in line at Portos. Hurry up. Hurry up. Really, bro? Really? Okay. Whatever. There's nothing I can do. I'm standing in line at Porto's, the busiest restaurant in LA. Okay, cool. Whatever. I got fired like a few days later. But it wasn't because of Dave, but that was the spark of it. So that was the spark. That was the beginning of the end of me working at Larrabee. So that the, I was late for Dave Pensado's food. And then Jason Joshua fucking, so fucking Tricky Stewart. So I don't know if y'all know Tricky Stewart. So Tricky Stewart, who produced like all the Dream stuff. So the Dream album, when he put out Fancy. So Fancy was actually, all that whole album that Fancy was on was recorded in Studio One while I worked there too. Y'all can timestamp all this shit. So this is why I really got fired. This is why I really got fired from Larrabee. So Tricky Stewart was walking up and down the halls. And he looked at me. He said, I look familiar. Right. So as runners, we get to wear whatever we want. My dumb ass. All I used to wear back then was basketball shorts and Jordan sandals. That's all I wore. Basketball shorts and Jordan sandals. 
So, tr uh, so Tricky thought I was a client. Like he thought that I was like another client in another studio. He didn't know I was a, a runner for He didn't know I worked for the studio. And he went back to Jason and was like, yo, who's that, that black dude up in there? Who is he? So Jason's like, oh, that's a runner. So Tricky tell Jason, yo, he look a little too comfortable to be a runner. Like he looked like he, he a client up in here. So then Jason didn't like that. They thought I was arrogant. They thought I was cocky because they, they thought I was too comfortable and they thought I wasn't humble enough and I wasn't walking around like a worker. And so between Dave and Jason, they whispered to the studio manager and I got fired. Right. That's cool because I left that situation. And while I was working at Larrabee, I was also working for Felly and we were producing get bucking here. And we just signed a deal with Def Jam. So it was like, all right, well, Felly live right around the corner from Larrabee. So when I got fired from Larrabee, it was actually perfect because now I can spend more time producing songs for Def Jam. You know what I'm saying? So y'all. Then head to the nearest high school game. I'm going to watch these niggas before they breach fame. Before they get million dollar deals. I'm going to keep it real up at Survive. Watching these niggas play crest. Hey, yo. It's about hey, yo. to get real yo. mess. I make noise like a dirt bike. Freestyle rhyme. I'm a mover up on her night. Yeah. You can't even see me on the turnpike. Yeah, I'm from the East Coast. Eat you like a Cheeto. Freestyle. Kiss me with the breezes. Yes, I'm Lego. Freestyle. Turn your forehead into a peephole. Put the four by two or three holes that like to deep throw. Yeah, I like the bustle flow. Freestyle. Fuck a hoe. Yeah. Have her ass yeah. bending over. Yeah, she trying to touch the toe. Yeah, nigga. Fuck it, though. Yeah, I'm straight driving on the microphone mechanical yeah. MacGyver uh, yeah straight MacGyver uh huh niggas uh, never surviving looks like it's gonna be a good night it's about 9 to 7 o'clock shit uh check it out doing real good I'm excited uh -huh. up on Anaheim short drive uh -huh. right yeah this is how we go down now we in the in the place to go now. Go now, about to go down. down. Don't go out of bounds. Yeah. I'm like trying to find a location. What's the freestyle? Y'all niggas can't leave my vicinity like y'all niggas was locked on probation. I freestyle battle against the whole nation. Why y'all hoes faking? Yeah, catch a nigga, but the freestyle will see you at the CO station. Who's talking up in the instrumental freestyle off the top? A nigga don't need a pencil. Looking for the lights in the sky. Freestyle rhyme, y'all niggas ain't tight to the mind. I'm gonna shine. Busting off the top. Moving. Take the while I'm driving. Fuck the cops. Yeah, fuck the cops. Y'all, y'all talking to somebody that's real. Now, unfortunately for me, unfortunately for me, and for y'all, every producer in the industry don't have this fairy tale fucking story to where you can Google their name and a list of discographies comes up. Like, unfortunately, everybody don't fucking have that story. I'm sorry. I don't have that story. I don't. I got into the industry when I was 16, but a lot of people took advantage of my talent. And I'm just so happy to be in the moment. I'm so happy to be in the studio. I'm giving files. I'm giving sessions. I'm adding stuff to people's beats, not even realizing that like, yo, I don't even care if I get credit. I don't even care. And a lot of people took advantage of that shit. Hey, you know what I'm saying? Hey, you know what I'm saying? Would you bless the board, dang? Hey, I had these motherfuckers pay me. I don't have them pay me. Okay, you know what I'm saying? My club man's like, I don't want to be stepping on nobody's toes. You know what I'm saying? They're stepping on who toes? <laughs> Are you good? I mean, I'm good. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? It's like, yo, I mean, shit. Like, man, we we really trying to move at the speed of light. You know what I'm saying? On the rails, this would be the fastest ride you would get on. At the same time, you know, I, I, mean, I, I got into with engineers, man. I, I just try to stay low. Well, no, no, he's 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 not with me. He's a part of this place. And he's yeah, nobody. Yeah. The only thing he is, if you say push this button, that's what they do. Right. You know what I'm saying? If you can get something jumping, you can make something happen. What exactly are you, you trying to do? You know what I'm saying? We need to. We're trying to get the vocals down to the best uh, uh, mix. You know what I'm saying? 
next mix, uh, mix we can do until we get some professionals to jump on it, you know? You know, make the shit sound right, somebody that can like, you know what I'm saying? You know, just, you know, put some flavor on, you know, that Teddy Riley shit. It just is what it is, you know what I'm saying? But when y'all see me on this motherfucking camera, just know that this is me. Like, that's where I come from. I don't come from the internet stage where you got dudes, content creators in the middle of Connecticut and Milwaukee, and they never been to LA, so they set up shop and they give y'all these industry videos from research. I'm giving y'all industry videos from walking that shit. And while I worked at Larrabee, I was sleeping in my car. When I worked at Larrabee, I was sleeping in my fucking car. I was sleeping in my fucking car. I sold a beat for $5,000. I sold a beat for $5,000. And when I got the opportunity to work for Larrabee, I didn't have a car. So I was using the $5,000 to rent cars every week. To rent cars every fucking week. So that I can go make runs at Larrabee. So I was the only dude that was like, yo, why you got a different car every week? Because I was renting cars. And then after my shift, I was going around the corner and sleeping in them motherfuckers. You feel what I'm saying? So when I got fired from Larrabee, I started working for Felly. Felly studio was at his house. So now I'm at his house, but I'm still sleeping in my car while I'm working for Felly. But so then I actually told Felly that I was sleeping in my car. I was like, bro, he was like, man, I noticed because I would park my car around the corner from his house. He said, I thought I saw your car a few times. And then he let me live with him. So then I moved in with the guy that I'm producing for and with, you know what I'm saying? So that was a four year relationship. So now I was pretty much in that situation and my job was to not exist. My job for four years was to not exist. That's what my job was. So while I'm working, we doing this, this deal with Def Jam. I go from Larrabee to now I'm getting Pro Two sessions from Kanye's engineer. Yeah, right now I'm mixing Kanye West, Neo, Andre 3000, Snoop Dogg, Call Finer Things. Shit. Go ahead, tell the DJ play Swift. So I ain't gotta tell these hoes who I is. Bitches hating again, that's music to my ears. What you think my fuel was for all of these years? I'm inspired when people don't like me. It keep me writing, so exciting. Man, the drama is so enticing. I might just bite a motherfucker like Tyson. And just to bite a motherfucker, show your chain, throw your cash. That's cake and icing. I asked her, you buying? She said, no, just sightseeing. Maybe that's cause you just ain't found the right thing yet. I'm getting Pro 2 sessions from Rihanna, I'm getting Pro 2 sessions from Ice Cube, I'm getting Pro 2 sessions from Snoop Dogg, from Gorilla Zoe, from Young Jock, from Jim Jones, from Sean Kingston, from Danny D. Kane, from Diddy, from Lil Jon, from Fat Man Scoop. And so now, that's, I'm in it, I'm in it, I'm in it. So y'all, please man, like, listen, I don't know, I could tell y'all these stories, I could, I could sit here for another 30 fucking hours straight and tell y'all industry stories. I got industry stories up my ass. I could tell y'all a new industry story every day for fucking three years straight. You name a person, you name a person, I have a story. Even Jay-Z, I ain't never met Jay-Z, but I'm on Robertson and Pico and Jay-Z pull up next to me in a fucking Hummer. And we had a red light and I followed him for like a few blocks. So that's my Jay-Z story. But my point is, is if there's anybody in the industry, I got a story. Might be short like that, but I got a story. And all my stories is not on the internet. I, I didn't, I, this is all off in the streets, in the industry, in the real world, you feel what I'm saying? So when I, when I come to the internet, I wanna meet y'all, y'all like, I don't, I don't care about subscribers and shit. Like, I wanna know y'all real now, I wanna know your mom, what the fuck is your dog's name? I wanna know your dog's name. You feel what I'm saying? Like, I'm a real human out here.
My name is Ferry Williams. I'm from Fontana. Uh, I'm a producer. I've been producing for about 10 years. Um, what Monster Session does for me is, um, as most of you guys are aware, we're in the age of the internet where all the information you ever wanted to know could be found on the internet. But I feel like it's very important to still uh, have that human contact um, that you can basically interact with on a day-to-day -day basis to get information out of. And so that's basically what Dame is providing all of us is that human contact. Um, you know, we can call him anytime we have any questions. He'll support us with any problems we're having, whether. You feel me? Come on, bro. The end.